it's a deep song. I don't need to explain it. You know where that song was going. It, it's wisdom of a fashion, and wisdom is what we're going to talk about now. But Black Cab Wisdom, remember, it's Carry On Cabbie Day. Here on BBC London 94.9, Mark Solomon has come into the studio with his book, Knowledge from the Back Seat. The back seat of your cab, I'm presuming, Mark. That's correct, Dawson. Thank you for inviting me in. No, it's a pleasure. Pleasure to have you in. Um, you've been a cabbie for how long now? been a cabbie for 11 years. We expect you to share your wisdom with us. I'll, I'll do my best. I'll do my best. Yeah, but you've been taking wisdom from your passengers to put... That's true. It's quite cheeky, isn't it? It's the other way around. Yeah. You're supposed to be telling us... Well, it's nice to think outside the box, isn't it? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Tell me, first of all, though, when did the idea come to you to decide to ask your passengers to share their wisdom with you? Uh, It came in September 2009, and it's still a bit of an enigma, Dot, and why I asked that first passenger. But I was at Waterloo Station on the taxi rank and made it to the front of a queue and a worldly wise North American passenger approached a cab said would you be so kind to take me to the Brooks Club in St James's said yeah jump in and something just clicked I thought I've got to ask this guy for the best bit of advice he's ever been given and I like what he said and when he Do you remember what that was? Well yeah I asked for the best bit of advice he said oh you're going to have to give me some time to think about that (laughs) then about 20 seconds later He said, excuse me, driver. I said, yes. He said, the answer to your question is think before you decide. And I thought, that's brilliant. He's actually practised what he preached. And I just carried on asking passengers for the rest of that shift. Do you you think he came up with that off the top of his head based on you asking him the question? Maybe, maybe. It's, uh, but it was just, I thought it was classic, you know, the way he thought. And then he come back and gave me his answer. And yeah, he was a nice methodical guy and... Yeah, it was a genuine answer. Did you scribble it down when he wrote it? Yeah, I mean, this was all very spontaneous, so I'd asked a few passengers, and then I found a bit of scrap paper and wrote it down in the front of a cab. And over time, you know, I got myself a clipboard, which I would leave in the back of the cab, and I developed a verbal pitch to encourage passengers or excuse them if it wasn't their thing. What does that do to the relationship of cabbie and passenger when you are asking for the advice? Well, as you say, it's a role reversal. Normally, it's a cabbie who's a social worker. Yes. But uh, the reason why, you know, a book has come of this and the reason why it's an ongoing project is because the passengers absolutely love it. And they really appreciated me doing something different. They appreciated being asked for their opinion or for a favourite quote or proverb or a sentence of wisdom. And it's really spiced up the job, Dot, and it's been fantastic. Do people generally offer you wisdom that is already out there, the the cliched wisdom, or do they come up with their own bits of wisdom? It's everything. Obviously, I'm going to get a lot of Shakespeare, a lot of Churchill, a lot of Oscar Wilde, but then, you know, every now and again I'll get lucky. Someone will pass something down which their great-great-grandfather or great-great-grandmother come out with, and I'll Google it, and it doesn't exist, which means I've hit the jackpot, it's original. Or if I'm lucky, they'll just be talking in conversation with me and they'll say something very profound, and I'll stop them. What you said there was brilliant. Please write that down on my sheet. And that's nice. That happens every now and again, you know. So you take the rough with a smooth, but it's great fun, you know. And how often does the journey get in the way of it? I mean, at some point you get to your destination and it must feel as if, you know, gosh, I wish I'd take you around the long way around. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you don't have to take the long way because this project improves the tips anyway. Yeah, good, uh, good. I, I, have I didn't mean it in that <laughs> sense. No, honestly, if, if you're yeah. passionate about something, yeah. you, you don't want it to end, though, That's do you? right. Uh, you know, every now and again, someone will be in a deep conversation with a fellow passenger, so you, you use a bit of tactfulness. Every now and again, the phone will go. But what I also do, I give the passengers a promotional card for the website at the end of a journey. So if they hadn't had a chance to contribute, they can post a comment on the website, which is blackcabquotes.com, the ongoing project. Mm. So. I've just had some wisdom here from Graham, who's producing the programme today. Okay. Um, let me just say, first of all, apparently Graham means shed. Yeah, in okay. terms of names, okay, it means shed, right? right? Okay, it's not fancy building, just a shed. Right, that's what Graham means. <laughs> I have to predicate or preface this wisdom with that because the advice that he's had it was advice from his granddad. How can I put this delicately? <laughs> there is actually no way of putting it delicately. 
He says, never trust a fart. Did you, have you had that one before? I've had that one before, oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Well, uh, you see, he thinks it's a genuine one from his granddad. You've had it before, have you? I have, but it sort of <laughs> brings us on to toilet humour. Trust Graham. Uh, <laughs> and shed, you well, mean. <laughs> that's right, trust Shed. But one of the things uh, that was interesting about this, the passengers done the market research before it even became the book Black Cab Wisdom. The passengers were saying this should be a book. It's a stocking filler, coffee table book. And a loo book. Exactly what it is. Yeah, and yep. <laughs> you know, people said to me, uh, you know, this is a type of book I look for because I like to read these sort of books on the loo. And I had no idea that, on, that so many people read on the lavatory. What else belief. are you going to do on the lavatory? Well, for <laughs> goodness sake! <laughs> goodness sake! So it, it's not divided into sections, though. When you say toilet humour, no, it, no, it's is, not. It was we got me and the publisher got the best sort of five hundred quotes, and mm. then we whittled it down. It wasn't necessarily in sections uh, but once we chose what we thought the best ones then we put it in some sort of order but it's fault it's relationships it's work mind provoking a bit of quirkiness it's a bit of everything do, do the words of wisdom make you think when somebody drops you know a nugget as it were uh, you say you hit the jackpot for example does it make you think is it more than just a quirky, humorous oh, anecdote? 100%, yeah. it's. Uh, I mean, the great thing for me, something that helps me sleep well at night, is in the publisher's catalogue, this comes into the gift and humour category. But I sleep well because it also borders on self-help and personal growth. So I'd like to think it's brought me on leaps and bounds, you know, and the fact that it's being shared is great. So it uh, covers a lot. It must be great when a passenger makes you laugh makes you smile quite apart from helping you think deeply but when somebody not cracks a joke but says you know i was laughing at what my man shed said there a moment ago because i was thinking about it i thought yeah you're absolutely right i wanted to crack up with laughter yeah and it's made my day to hear that in a way and i just wonder when you when you get a great line do do you do you laugh in the cab yeah you you know i suppose one that springs to mind Dotton was uh, a passenger who was thinking deeply it was quite serious and he said yeah I've got something for you he said uh, the biggest mistake I made was not marrying my second wife first <laughs> and we both burst out <laughs> laughing and he was serious but it just diffused it you know so you do get some comedy material from this that is that is a word of wisdom actually yeah. I mean yeah. that's not just comedy <laughs> I'm sure many people will agree with that yeah so it comes into marriage relationship guidance too of course <laughs> Okay, the the journey itself is the reason people step into your cab. How long does it generally take them before they they, they get with the program of what you're asking them? You said the first American took him twenty minutes or so before. Yeah, came it's out uh, it, it's you know there's not always a pattern. Some people will get in and I'll explain the concept and say I'm all over this driver. I'm all over this. Yeah, yeah. Others, you know, they're not expecting it. So I try and make them as relaxed as possible. I sort of stress the point, this is optional, it's your space in the back, you don't have to do anything. I have a few examples on my clipboard from other passengers. (laughs) This sounds scary if you just got into (laughs) a cab uh... in the middle of the night, you don't have to do this, (laughs) (laughs) it's optional. (laughs) No, I mean, I've got a very high sort of success rate, as in probably 95% of the passengers who get in Mm. end up contributing. I think it's because they know they don't have to and, you know... How about the other 5%? The other 5%, they're probably on the phone or smooching. (laughs) (laughs) It's a game in a way, isn't it? It it is a game, but life's a game. Have you had people get into the cab and say, oh, I've heard about you? A couple of times, yeah. A couple of times. uh, Picked up some of your colleagues from BBC Radio 4 Mm. and they contributed and uh, they invited me into uh, All in the Mind production. And uh, so a few passengers who got in after that said, oh, I heard you on the radio. So that can happen. And I've also picked up the same passengers twice. And, and do you have to tip them when they come up with the, with the cracker? Or No, I give them the promotional card for my website so they've got access to some more quotes. And Because uh, fair is fair, you really should tip them. They're contributing to your book. Well, they're they? getting some of the other passenger examples, <laughs> aren't they? So they're getting something back. Yes. Uh, do they tip you? Yeah, it's really improved my tips. You wouldn't believe it. <laughs> but that's not why you're doing it. Of course no, not. That's not. Of no, course not. Uh... Um, 
it's it's a labour of love for you. And yeah. you, you said you started in 2009. That's right, September 2009. So coming on to two years now, and yeah. I'm presuming this is only part one, that you haven't stopped. No, this, uh, you know, the it's the collection of these quotes and the accumulating of them that spices the shifts up for me, you know. This is, I've sort of found my calling here, you know. Good for so you. So I'm still collecting, uh, and if this book, Black Cab Wisdom, goes OK... I've definitely got enough material to go back to the publisher and inquire about a part two. It's a fabulous way of looking at it, that you found your calling. Yeah. And your calling is partly engaging with people. Yeah. Because I'm sure not every cab driver is going to be as successful as you, asking the same question. And mm. there, there might be ones that are more successful in terms of 95% success rate, but I'm sure not everybody. You have to have a certain, you know, personality, I suppose. Well, that's be right. personable. I mean, this has sort of grown organically, Dotton. It wasn't planned, and it's just grown slowly, and I've sort of verbally developed that pitch. And, you know, it's the fact that the passengers have enjoyed it so much, which is why it's continued. What about the wisdom from cabbies? Because... As we started off saying, it's usually cabbies that impart their wisdom, their knowledge of all things under the sun during a cab journey. And um, the best anecdotes I've had from cab drivers are, for me, the treasures of life, really, because they'll tell you about some bloke they picked up halfway across London and he was this bloke and this, that and that happened. And it you, you, opens you up to a, a new world almost. You You see every aspect of you know the great metropolis that is the capital why why not impart the knowledge from cab drivers i'm sure that would make a cracker as well well that would be part two the book that compliments is oh, right so you owe me a tip you owe me a tip well i wasn't going to say that on air i don't know if have a cab driver doing it now no they weren't because it's your calling as it were so what's your favorite one uh favorite passenger quote uh purpose as a currency is of more value than money that's, yeah, that's yeah. deep, isn't it? Yeah, that's deep. Uh, I picked up the boxer David Hay. He was, you know, very nice, and he did give me the time of day. And he said, "Mark, set the bar twice as high as you ever think you could achieve. Then, if you only go halfway, you would have achieved a great deal." And I think that's nice. Oh, you know, that's good for him. Yeah, good for him. Yeah. Uh, did he? Was that something that he came up with, or was that his yeah, trainer th- or coach? No, no, he, you know? it was just him. Yeah, and, and he wrote that down for me and verbally said it. So I was. Appreciate that, David. And, and, and when you take well-known people in the cab and you yeah. ask them this, what, what's usually their reaction? Uh, no, you know, it's uh, it's not just about celebrities. I ask everyone who's you know who's not on the phone, and the reaction is very good. You know, like, for example, your colleagues at BBC Radio Four, Professor Brian Cox, Adam Rutherford, they were brilliant. It wasn't oh, we, we're not going to do this. They went for it immediately. You know. So uh, when you have somebody like David Hay, who incidentally listens to the show, is uh, he's probably listening now, and he'll appreciate your big up. Yeah. Um, when you have somebody like him, it immediately makes the book, and his quotes in there, isn't it? Yeah, it's in the book. Yeah. Yeah, it immediately makes the book glamorous, if you like. And he might have a copyright on that quote as well, by yeah. the way. <laughs> but you know, people will listen up because it's him. Yeah. However, that's not my favourite quote, as I said. No, it's the the 100% stress. It's not about celebrities, it's about passengers who have been absolutely brilliant. You know, they've directed this. It was them who said, you know, you've got to start a website, start a blog. You've got to turn this into a book, which actually uh, brings me on to a Muhammad Ali quote, which uh, relates to belief, which is, it's a repetition of affirmations that leads to belief. And once that belief becomes a deep conviction, things begin to happen. And that's exactly what happened. There, the passengers, so many smart passengers, kept giving me the nod, turn this into a book, and then you start to believe in your concepts, and hence the book that is in front of you. Dotton. Yeah, are you sure you're not? Well, you can't give up the cabbing, can you? Because it's part of your calling. But it seems to me as if this wisdom is taking over. And uh, the driving from one location to another is just your hobby now. That's what I mean. Life for me is about mind games. It's whatever gets you through the day or night. So before I, you know, set foot in the cab, I'm saying to myself, I'm just going to communicate with some passengers, collect some quotes and proverbs. But as a result, I get improved tips anyway, you know, because of this. 
And, you know, cab driving's restored my faith in London, as I love it. It's a tough game because a tall bloke like me cemented to the seat. You know, you do get aches and pains, but the fact that I'm incorporating this project with it and, you know, I'm driving around a fabulous metropolis like London, it's all okay, you know? You know, there's an author, Magnus Mills, who's a South London bus driver. Okay, yeah. And came up with this fantastic book, got all the plaudits, and he became the kind of philosophical bus driver. Yeah. As it were. You are the philosophical cabbie okay, now. Okay, I'm representing a cab uh, Yeah, but in philosophy, you know, you started yeah. off with Aristotle, Plato and all those guys, yeah. and now we've got Mark Solomon. I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not being funny here. I'm being very. We've got to keep it a bit, haven't we? Got some, what, what do your family think of all of this? Uh, I mean, they're really pleased that you know I've got you know a purpose in my driving because yeah. uh, it is a tough game. But when you've got a reason to go out there and do it, you know they're pleased for me. So, I, 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 at the beginning, you know, they thought it was a bit bizarre. <laughs> you know, what's all these paperwork you're coming home with and well, what about your fellow cabbies <laughs> if your family think it's bizarre what do they think uh but only a few of them know about it really ah, it's, uh, you kept it quiet yeah i mean i just a lot of them I have an arse i tell uh, you there's a few more know about it today yeah i'm sure yeah i'm sure yeah, and, so. and, and and they'll know you will they some of them will know yeah. me i think they'll just be pleased that i'm incorporating creativity you know because i can be a little bit disappointed with myself if i'm not if i'm going for long periods of time without any creativity so the fact that I'm doing my job and doing this as well is good for me. Uh, let's go through a few more of these whilst we've still got a few minutes, okay. if you like. Um, yeah. uh, my life is my career, my job is my job. Uh, well, that was from the same passenger who said uh, purpose as a currency is a more value than money. Her name was Faith, wasn't it? You know it. I know, yeah. yeah. Very <laughs> good, <laughs> OK. <laughs> oh, this, this is going to be something you of a know, game then. And the nice thing about this, as a result of this book... I can picture a lot of the passengers and picture a lot of the journeys. So in a way, it's like a souvenir of my cab driving career. This is a twist on an old wise tale. Okay. Um, and you might remember who said this. If I can see further than anyone else, it's only because I'm standing on the shoulders of genius. Uh, I can remember the passenger, Rob. I can't remember who it was originally by. Right. Uh, Isn't that yet. interesting? <laughs> you can't remember the Isaac Newton <laughs> no. part of it, but you do remember it was Robin the Ab Rob in advertising yeah. part. Yeah. I love that. I love that. Yeah. Okay, how about this? Um, a minute of, and this is an author. I'll give you that. Yeah. Oh, you know, I know. Uh, it, you know, I, you're going to tell me off because I'm not going to be good at pronouncing his surname. It's Chuck Polonik. Yeah. Who was author of the Fight Club and That's a massive right. movie. That's right. And he was in the back of your cab. He was in the back of my cab, and he said, "Mark, uh, a minute of perfection was worth the effort." A moment was the most you could ever expect from perfection. That is word for word. That is... I'm really impressed. He's a great writer, by the way. Yeah. Fantastic writer. Great passenger. I'm sure. Yeah. A great tipper? He was OK, yeah. OK, well, he's an American. <laughs> well, yeah, OK. Uh, <laughs> what about this? Not everyone who gets you out of trouble wants to do you good. And not everyone who gets you into trouble wants to do you bad well that's up for debate that one isn't it but uh, it's, it's a thinking one isn't it it is it's, uh, and it's a pertinent one if you think of the events of last week yeah it's uh, hmm, I mean may I throw in a quote which I got the other day which sort of relates to the events of last week is that okay sure please it was, uh, let's see if we can find it live your life as if you were being watched by your loved ones make them proud not ashamed who said that just a passenger, it's uh, Tom and Sophie, a couple. Mm. Yeah. That's a good one. That's yeah. a very good one. Gosh, it's moving. You, I didn't realise that you were going to make me move. I, I, I'd laughed at most of them and enjoyed them, but I didn't realise you were going to be that moving as well. It's a fascinating book. It is not just a book to sit on the loo and read, <laughs> I hasten to add, but it's a humorous book, and it'll tell us a lot about being a passenger in a London cab as well. Okay. You know, It's been great speaking to you, Mark. Thank you. Dot, may I just thank a couple of people? Uh, it's a request show, so I think you can, yeah. OK, thank you. I wanted to thank all the contributing passengers and all the passengers who've supported the project. That's more than a couple of people now. And, uh, Come also on. The, I'll give you an inch, you take a mile. I know, it's typical. And yeah. say the publisher, Summersdale, they've been really good and uh, all the people at the BBC who've uh, authentically shown an interest in this project. And the book Black Cab Wisdom by my guest Mark Solomon, a cracker, is published at £5.99. Mark, thanks very much for coming in.